Hi, I'm Pete. Welcome to my channel, Cedric Canada Gear and Outdoors. Today we're going to look at this knife, the Victorinox Forester. So, the Victorinox Forester, part of the uh, larger 111mm range, I think, of the Victorinox Wasami knives. This is actually a very large pocket knife. Um, you don't quite realize until you handle one, especially when you handle one next to a uh, regular or even the, the classic um, cadet size Swiss Army knives, how large it actually is. Um, this tool I would suggest is comparable to, say, carrying a mid featured or low featured multi tool like a Leatherman skeletal. Uh, it'll take up about the same amount of space in your pocket and it'll do uh, the same amount of variation of tasks, really. Uh, the main feature of this knife is, of course, a large locking blade. This large locking blade is about four inches in length, and it is one of the larger folding knife blades I've got. When I compare it to my go-to cold steel American Lawman, which is, by um, all accounts, a larger size um, everyday carry knife, um, the blade is, in fact, a little bit longer on the Victorinox. It's um, a narrow blade, of course, the face isn't as broad, but you do get a lot of blade, is what I am saying. You have a very ergonomic way of carrying it as well. Um, the thing about the Forester is you give up some of the uh, handle features, namely the toothpick and the tweezers, for a rubberized, um, different grip, which I find quite pleasant. The uh, edges are rolled, o uh, rolled over and rounded over and makes for quite an ergonomic grip. Let's uh, go to tabletop and have a bit of uh, a closer look at it. So there we have the Forester at the bottom, uh, and above that is the Cold Steel American Lawman. And then above that is a standard Victorinox Blue Cadet, which is the 84mm knife which comes with about a 2 inch blade. This is, by my count, about a 4 inch blade. It's fairly large, it's at least 3.75 3 uh, inches in total. It's um, definitely in that large EDC category. The blade is a locking blade. It's controlled with a left-handed line of lock to protect your hand when you obviously have to put your hand over the blade path. If you are a right-hander, there is a fairly strong half stop on the blade. It does stop right there. Falls into place. Obviously a squared off blade tang. No problems at all. Blade snaps shut. Does quite well. The other features on this knife are a also locking heavy duty flat pry or screwdriver slash bottle opener slash wire crimper sort of the larger version of your standard Victorinox combination bottle opener tool in fact a much larger version of said tool quite a bit of thickness there to do some prying fairly versatile tool I've seen some people flatten this a bit more and make it into a chisel uh, on these uh, rucksack slash forester slash trekker models. I'll talk about the line in a second. Then you have a can opener with a smaller screwdriver on the end. Can opener, I guess, is a standard Boy Scout tool, really. And then you've got a very long saw. So that's a that's a saw that is about as long as you get on a pocketable tool. I'll flip out the Leatherman rebar saw, because it's the one I have on me right now. And this is on a, a full-size multi-tool. Um, yeah, you're getting a fair bit more saw on your... You know, and it's all relative, of course. Like, none of these are going to be able to fell giant trees, but you're getting a fair bit more saw on your Forester than you are on your rebar, or most of the other Leathermans, in fact. One thing I wouldn't mind is if they made the saw the locking tool rather than the knife, because, as I was sawing before, uh, I was sawing some branches off an apple tree, which needed to be sawed, it was growing too low, and it was getting some shoots off of it. Um, I noticed that when the wood get, uh, sticks into the, um, the saw sticks into the wood, um, when the branch starts to, you know, break, or, you know, when you move it up, or when you adjust the pressure on the, on the branch to keep the cut going, the saw can get stuck, and when you pull out, it does sometimes fold away. Not that it's a safety issue, it's more of an annoyance issue, but I would prefer the saw to be locking over, especially the screwdriver, but even over the knife. Uh, the whole tool is made of stainless steel and this plastic with then some rubberized plastic inserts. Uh, very, very grippy and nice uh, high quality tool. On the back there is an awl, which is always just, 
I don't know about you guys, I always feel like this real sense of danger pulling the all out of a Victorinox. It's like that metal pull is just too close and too sharp. Always feel like I'm going to rip my nail off. Um, and they're always quite highly sprung tools as well. So <laughs> there's an all which is yeah, not, not too much of a um, not too much of a used tool for me to be honest. But good for the scope of the tool. And then on the back is a, a corkscrew which you're either going to get that or you're going to get a, a screwdriver. So there you go. Now the range of this, there is a few very similar tools made by Victorinox. There is this one, there is the rucksack, which has pretty much the same tools, but with the standard red, red handles, um, and then the toothpick and the tweezers, without these uh, inlays. Then you've got the trekker, which has uh, the corkscrew on the back, uh, no, the uh, Phillips on the back, I think, which also comes in one-hand models. This also comes in a one-hand model. And then you've got the soldier's knife, which may actually have, now the soldier's knife I think has the, the Phillips head here, the trekker still has the corkscrew and similar tools. So lots of these um, main blade plus saw Victorinox is getting around. The larger ones in the range, the next tool up, you'll be getting a p extra line with a pair of scissors or a pair of pliers. Uh, I think that'll be the Atlas, and then the Hercules has the scissors and the pliers, and then the work, you end up with the work champ, which is about this wide and really will beast of a thing. The thing I like about this tool is that it definitely does just still feel like a pocket knife rather than a multi-tool like say this one here or this one here. Even the uh, multi-tools with the external opening blades, you still feel like you're just holding a big square of metal with a blade in it. This one sort of starts to channel why the skeletal is so successful because it's ergonomic. Much bigger blade than the skeletal. But the skeletal, the great thing about it was they've actually put some thought into making it squeezable and handleable. This is the same, they've got nice contour grips here and it's actually very very nice to use, nice to hold and um, it's a very nice basic blade shape so it's definitely feeling more like a pocket knife than a multi-tool, it's just a pocket knife with an extra saw on it. I'm really really happy with it. Um, a few things, I'm not sure, this probably isn't even a fit and finish thing, this is just a Victorinox thing, they seem to be not too bothered about blade play, no, but I don't mean the blade's going to come free, I mean they've never been bothered about things like this. It's just up and down, like about a millimetre of blade play. And they don't even try to stop this. I think it's a result of the polishing process. They made a choice, we can have highly polished, rust resistant tools, and the polishing process rounds off bits of metal. So, if you look in there, let's get it right in, right in there. If you look in there, you'll see just the edges of that bar where the tang meets the the, the uh, <laughs> let's try and focus where the tang meets the spring. They're all rounded off. Like it's it's fine. It's just obviously the choice they've made. So as a result of that, you're going to get just a little bit of. It's not going to have that flat surface on flat surface stick that is going to really reduce blade play. It's nothing that really affects the knife. It's not going to make the knife spring out because you've got a very thick liner lock sprung all the way across that blade. It's not coming off. It's just something that you get with Victorinox locking blades. And if you've got one that doesn't do this, please show me because I've handled lots of these now. Let's say a rescue tool. I've had a rucksack, had an atlas. Um, they've all done the same thing. And I'm fairly certain Victorinox doesn't care. Victorinox are a stubbornly traditional company. They haven't put pocket, they've, they've put pocket clips on just one of these large pocket knives, which is the Sentinel, and it's a single bladed, no nail nick open, uh, no one hand opening knife, and that's the one they've decided to put their pocket clip on. Some of the decisions baffle me, but they don't care, they're obviously still selling very, very well. They're, you're never going to get them to change it, so it just is what it is. They're fine with the way that they do their business, because they're selling knives, so there you go. Um, Overall, it's real minor stuff, like anything, any issues I'm going to have. Um, I guess some people would prefer to have their handle tools. I think on a larger tool like this, if I'm carrying this, this is for when I'm in the garden or when I'm... I'd still carry this out on the town or day by day because it does have that sort of passive, um, non-threateningness that a Victorinox has. Um, but I'm going to have the tweezers on my key ring, I'm going to have... The, uh, the toothpick, I, it's not, never something I really use. The tweezers, I carry uh, keyring tweezers, so I don't know, it just don't, never really bothered me too much. This knife, I feel, is a bit like carrying an open L for a few reasons. Um, it's just a nice traditional sort of blade. It's not really going to bother anyone. It's 
flat ground, it doubles brilliantly as a food knife, it's highly stainless, uh, this is a carbon Obanel, but the stainless Obanel, very similar, um, very stainless and just a, a good general purpose non-threatening knife, and it's really something that you, you know, can trust Victorinox to, to always be making, so you, you can assume that people, they'll see that shield, and they know, that, oh that's a Boy Scout knife, they make that association, and it makes it a safe carry, even, if, even though it is quite a large knife. So there's certain things that Victorinox do that you wouldn't want too many other companies doing, but just the fact that Victorinox is going to continue to do it, continue to make these traditional knives, I guess we'll leave it to the squeezers and we'll leave it to perhaps the Victorinox Wenger Evo range to perhaps start really, you know, innovating. But as for this knife, I think it sits quite nicely in its range. I think it's going to do a fair bit of business for me. And that's probably the perfect example for it, uh, to be honest. Like a... Um, uh, if you're a gardener and you've got, say, some fruit trees that you find yourself picking at and prod prodding at from time to time, this is a great knife to have in your pocket. In fact, today I was out trimming branches off my apple trees because it needed... To, I'd been meaning to do it for a while, but I just hadn't got to the shed to get my silky saw and then gotten all the way back to the front yard to do my apple trees. It just wasn't, wasn't something that happened. But I got the kids out of the car, sent them inside, sat them in front of the telly for a second, then got to those apple trees and did it in one fell swoop with my little saw. So good little way of using this Victorinox Forester. And if that's the type of person that you are or you know someone like that, then this would be a great knife for them. You'll pay about $50 in Australia for this knife, which is a very good deal, I think. Um, as usual, the Victorinox steel will dull quickly, take a wicked edge, be highly corrosion resistant, and sharpen very easily. So, um, that's that summarized in a very short little um, all-you-need-to-know segment. Okay, so it's never going to compete with high-speed steels like CTS XHP for, you know, it's not going to cut for days like this has and, and still will. Um, but for what it is, for a $50 pocket knife with a saw involved, a bit more of a traditional touch, a great backup. So you're going camping and you've got your large fixed blade knife, you've got your folding saw. Having this on you as well will do those jobs in case something happens to one of those other things as well. So Victorinox Forester, thanks for listening to my ramble. Um, I'm pretty happy with it, and I'll uh, see you in the next video. Bye, guys.